Assalamu alaikum everybody, today we'll be looking at Bacteroides fragilis. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. So, let's jump straight into the video. Bacteroides fragilis is a gram-negative rod. It's an anaerobic bacterium. It is pleomorphic. You know, might be wondering, you just said gram-negative rod, and are you saying pleomorphic? As pleo is for many and morph is for shapes. So, does this bacterium have many shapes? Yeah. It varies from rod to various shapes, like it might be spheres. It is not responsible for forming spores. It is antibiotic resistant. Bacteroides fragilis is resistant to penicillin, first-generation cephalosporins, and aminoglycosides, making this bacterium the most antibiotic-resistant anaerobic bacterium. Bacteroides fragilis is bile-resistant. I'll talk about bile resistance in lab diagnosis, so stay tuned for that. It is beta-lactamase positive. That's why it is penicillin-resistant. And Bacteroides fragilis belongs to Bacteroidaceae family. This is how Bacteroides fragilis looks like under the microscope. I'll show its fair forms later in today's video. Here, I would like to take a moment to thank Picmonic for sponsoring today's video. Picmonic is an audiovisual learning platform that is tailored to assist the needs of medical students, physician assistants, doctors, nurses, and more. Picmonic provides various resources like video lectures, visual mnemonics, quizzes, study scheduler, and more. We'll also look at the visual mnemonic of Bacteroides fragilis later in today's video. If you guys are interested in signing up on Picmonic, I've got you a discount code MEDZOKROF and the link in the description that will give you 20% off on your purchase. So what are you waiting for? Go sign up and have fun learning! Bacteroides fragilis also utilizes the following things to survive in the human intestine. It has a complex series of surface proteins, so it utilizes them. Then it has got the lipopolysaccharide chains. It also has outer membrane vesicles. Bacteroides fragilis is the most common cause of these serious anaerobic infections, like abscesses, sepsis, peritonitis, and diarrhea. It also has certain virulence factors like enterotoxin, the endotoxin, the Bacteroides fragilis toxin, BFT. It has a polysaccharide capsule and it also produces certain enzymes. Alright guys, let's have a look at this very cool pigmonic of Bacteroides fragilis. In this pigmonic, Bacteroides fragilis is depicted as the bacteria droid and fragile box. In this story, we are the droid circuit board shots, resulting in erratic behavior. Now, Bacteroides fragilis is gram-negative, the Graham cracker negative devil, this one. Anaerobic bacteria, shown here as the ant wearing the robe. Bacteroides fragilis is the part of the normal colonic flora, represented as the normal flowers, these ones, and in the gut. These bacteria produce vitamin K, the Y king K king. Pathologically, these bacteria produce gas in tissue, the fart, this one, known as gas gangrene. And this gas notorious for its foul smell, shown here by the Y king king pinching his nose, making the smelly face. As a result of the infection, this organism can cause gastrointestinal abscesses depicted by the abscess guy in the GI system. This organism contains beta-lactamase, making it penicillin-resistant. The tied-up pencil villain, this one. Because of this, treatment for this disease includes antibiotics that are not beta-lactams and those which cover anaerobic bacteria such as clindamycin, portrayed here by the cleaning mice, these ones, along with metronidazole, the metronide. And that's it for the Bacteroides fragilis pigmonic. If you guys are interested in signing up on pigmonic, I've got you a discount code, medzokrof, and link in the description that will give you 20% off on your purchase. So what are you waiting for? Go sign up and have fun learning. Before talking about Bacteroides fragilis in more detail, we should know about the bacterial classification. Bacteria are classified into spirochetes, they're also classified into acid fast based on acid fast staining, and there's an exception that is mycoplasma. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive and also into gram negative. Gram negative are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis, and also into rods. And rods are further subdivided into aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides, and facultative. Facultative are further subdivided into curves that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio. 
and also into straight ones that are further subclassified into enteric and related, which includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Into zoonotic, that includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia. And respiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Bodytella, and Legionella. But that's not all. Gram negative bacteria are also classified based on different shapes into diplococci, cocobacilli, rods, and comma shaped. Diplococci are further subdivided based on maltose fermentation. If a bacteria ferments maltose, it's Neisseria meningitidis. And if it doesn't, it's Neisseria gonorrhea. Cocobacilli includes Haemophilus influenza, Brucella, Pasteurella, and Bodytella pertussis. Rods are further subdivided based on lactose fermentation. If bacteria ferment lactose, they are going to be fast or slow fermenters. Fast ones are Klebsiella, E. coli, and Enterobacter, and slow ones are Serratia and others. And if bacteria do not ferment lactose, they are going to be oxidase positive or negative. If a bacterium is oxidase positive, that's Pseudomonas, and if it's negative, that's Shigella, Salmonella, Proteus, and Yersinia. And comma-shaped bacteria are further subdivided based on certain criteria, like if a bacterium produces urease, it's H. pylori, if it grows in alkaline media, it's Fibrio cholerae, and if it grows in 42 degrees Celsius temperature, it's Campylobacter jejuni. Lecture outline, we're done with the introduction, pygmonic review of bacteroides fragilis, and also the bacterial classification. Now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. Bacteroides fragilis is rod to pleomorphic shaped. It appears as rods, right? But sometimes it can appear as spheres. It varies in size from 0.5 to 1.5 micrometer into 1 to 6 micrometers. It's pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative. Structure. Bacteroides fragilis is an encapsulated bacterium. Its capsule is a virulence factor for it. It is not responsible for producing spores. It is immortal. The reason is it has got no flagella and no cilia. But the Bacteroides fragilis has the Peritricus fimbri that helps in its adhesion to other molecular structures. It produces an endotoxin that is enterotoxin that is Bacteroides fragilis toxin, BFT. Here you can see the Bacteroides fragilis. This is its rod shape. But these are its spheres. Let me zoom in. Here you can see the rods clearly. These are rods. But here it is in rod shape, but also spheres like these ones. Habitate hosts. Humans are its hosts. Bacteroides fragilis is found in human colon, numbering approximately 10 to 11 per gram of feces, and is also found in vagina of approximately 60% women. This is Bacteroides fragilis, but there's another species of Bacteroides that is Bacteroides corrodens. It is found in oral cavity. Transmission. Bacteroides fragilis is a part of human normal colonic flora. It means that it's a commensal there. But when there's a mucosal break, like the mucosa of intestine breaks, and Bacteroides fragilis gets the chance to enter the bloodstream and reaches other organs where it can cause infections, this is how it's transmitted. The predisposing factors that can cause mucosal barrier disruption or break or surgery trauma, chronic disease, or malignancy. Pathogenesis. Bacteroides fragilis is a part of human normal colonic flora. Infections caused by it are endogenous, and these infections are not communicable. And as we've discussed, these infections arise from a break in mucosal surface. Bacteroides fragilis cause a variety of infections such as local abscesses, at the site of mucosal break, metastatic abscesses by hematogenous spread to distant organs, or lung abscesses by the aspiration of oral flora. Generally, the diseases caused by Bacteroides fragilis are below the diaphragm. Local tissue necrosis, impaired blood supply, and growth of facultative anaerobes at the site contribute to anaerobic infections caused by Bacteroides fragilis. The facultative anaerobes such as E. coli utilize the oxygen, thereby reducing it to a level that allows the anaerobic bacteroides to grow. As a result, many anaerobic infections contain a mixed facultative and anaerobic flora. The virulence factors we discussed in introduction. Now let's talk about them in detail. Endotoxin that is released by the Bacteroides fragilis is Bacteroides fragilis toxin. It contains a variant lipid A that is missing one of the fatty acids and consequently is thousandfold less active 
than the typical endotoxin of bacteria, such as Neisseria meningitidis. The second virulence factor is its polysaccharide capsule. The host response to the capsule plays an important role in the abscess formation. The third virulence factor is the enzymes released by Bacteroides fragilis. Enzymes like hyaluronidase, collagenase, phospholipase, these are produced by this bacterium and they contribute to tissue damage. Clinical findings. Bacteroides fragilis is most frequently associated with intra-abdominal infections, either peritonitis or localized abscesses. Pelvic abscesses, necrotizing fasciitis, and bacteremia can also occur. Symptoms range from abdominal pain to tenesmus and inflammatory diarrhea. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of blood, feces, CSF, we'll need samples from vagina and oral cavity. Microscopy. On gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram negative because it's pink colored. It varies from rod to pleomorphic in shape. Size. It varies in size from 0.5 to 1.5 into 1 to 6 micrometers. Bacteroides fragilis is pink or red colored. The reason is it's gram negative. This is how Bacteroides fragilis looks like under the microscope. It is pink colored, a rod shaped bacterium. It is immotile as we cannot see any motility apparatus like a flagella or cilia. Culture. For the colony's formation, we need samples of blood, feces, and CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid. Colonies formed are yellow, just like these ones, and are large-sized colonies, as you can see there. Bacteroides fragilis can be isolated anaerobically on blood agar plates containing canamycin and vancomycin to inhibit the growth of unwanted organisms. Another agar that is used for formation of the colonies of Bacteroides fragilis is Bacteroides bile asculin agar, BBE. It makes sense because Bacteroides fragilis is bile-resistant. Bacteroides fragilis can be identified by biochemical reactions, for example, sugar fermentation, and by production of certain organic acids, for example, formic, acetic, or propionic acids, which are detected by gas chromatography. Treatment. As we know, Bacteroides fragilis is resistant to certain antibiotics like penicillin, first-generation cephalosporins, and aminoglycosides. So, for Bacteroides fragilis, the drug of choice is going to be metronidazole with cefoxetine, clintomycin, and chloramphenicol as an alternative. Antibiotic therapy is usually accompanied by surgical drainage of abscesses. Lung abscess often heals without drainage. Prevention. There is no vaccine available for Bacteroides fragilis infections and the administration of perioperative antibiotics is necessary because the transmission of Bacteroides fragilis occurs after pelvic or abdominal surgery. So if the antibiotics are administered prior to surgery, so the transmission of Bacteroides fragilis will be inhibited. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Bacteroides fragilis. It is responsible for causing abscesses, sepsis, peritonitis, and diarrhea. It is transmitted when there's mucosal disruption of the colon and it gets into bloodstream and other organs. Hosts are humans and its diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, biochemical reactions such as sugar fermentation and gas chromatography. For treatment, metronidazole is used and surgical drainage of abscesses is also required. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle medzokhrof. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.